Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So, you may recognize the house that I'm at right now if you are watching Dan Maleri's channel over at DM Exotics. I'm gonna put his link in the description below, but after watching his videos, I knew I had to make it up here to Northern Thailand to do this collab with Dan and go out and find all the really amazing reptiles that are found in this part of Thailand, some of which exist here and nowhere else. So, Dan and I are gonna do a collab where we're gonna go around this entire village and see see what really awesome Thai reptiles we can find. I'm Dave Kaufman and I tour the world to see how reptiles are living in the wild. And while I'm at it, checking out some of the most amazing facilities and reptile expos as well. It's all about learning, appreciation and conservation. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. All right, Rattler, so we just got a call that there's a woman who owns a house on the other side of this village and there's a snake in her yard right now and she wants us to come and check it out and possibly even remove it. So we're gonna load up the truck right now and head over there. snake. Whoa! <laughs> These have specialized dentition. They eat eggs and so they're rear fanged but the the actual rear fanged is rear fang is bladed. So what they do is they um, they'll search out clutches of eggs. Uh, I've heard also even if the eggs are being guarded by a, a female they'll annoy the female snake that's on the eggs so much until they leave the eggs and then these guys will have their ways with them. They don't eat the entire egg. They use the special dentition to slice the egg open and then they just stick their head inside the egg and they just suck all the contents down. And they can eat really large contents of, of egg. Wow. Um, it's kind of surprising how much they can eat. But this is a large female and we're here in the, in the dry season and it's not particularly warm, but man, these kukri snakes are really on the move. Um, our, our first few years here, we never found any kukris. And now all of a sudden, like the last two years, for some reason, the local population has really exploded. We've, we've found a lot of these animals. Wow. And the bites really suck. Um, the teeth have, any, have not evolved to, uh, you know, damage human skin, but boy, it's extremely effective. They give you kind of a slash, and uh, and it opens you right up. And it's... then they drink your contents. Yeah. <laughs> they do. They have strong cheek muscles and jaw muscles. Yes. And they specialize in reptile eggs, so they eat primarily reptile eggs. Yeah. In captivity, I've I feed them any kind of egg. I can even just take an egg and just crack it and dump the contents into a, a little container, a little cup, or whatever, and they'll go in and. Uh, and take care of it. Although they have a wider, ver so these guys have a wider variety of um, foods in the wild than actual egg-eating snakes that are from Africa. All right, so the woman who owns this house that called us to come and see the snake, she wants us to relocate it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take it somewhere, you know, on the outskirts of this village and release it. So the best part about snake removal here in Thailand is we get paid in beer. <laughs> How fantastic is that? <laughs>
All right, Rattlers, so one of my top target species for Thailand is this guy. This is a sunbeam snake. This is the world's most iridescent snake. They are literally living rainbows. They have an incredible iridescence about them. And one of the cool things about these guys are their smooth scales. This is one of the only snakes that you can pet forward and backwards and it feels exactly the same. Now, they have really flat heads and the reason for that is that these are actually subterranean snakes. They spend most of their life underground. They don't like the sunshine despite their name. It's kind of ironic that you are the most iridescent snake in the world and yet you spend the majority of your time underground. So here in Thailand, sunbeam snakes have a really varied diet. They eat kind of almost everything. They eat mice and they eat worms and they eat frogs and other amphibians. They even eat lizards and other snakes. And this is a really common snake and it has a really wide distribution here in Thailand. They are found at temples like this. They're found out in the swamps. They're found in people's backyards. They, so it's a very successful snake out here in that they have a varied diet and they occupy a really wide ranging distribution of all sorts of different habitats. But sunbeam snakes in our domestic situations are really rewarding snakes and a lot of people are just starting to work with these. I had a couple of sunbeam snakes a number of years ago and I had no problem getting them onto mice. I had no problem um, acclimating them to frozen thawed. But here's a little tip for you if you want to work with sunbeam snakes in captivity. What you should do with sunbeam snakes is actually make like a little ramp and put that under the substrate so you can use uh, sphagnum moss and you can use freedom breeder cocoa blocks. But put that ramp at one half of the cage so that the substrate slopes down then wet the the substrate on top of that ramp so that you have a soggy portion of your enclosure and a dry portion on top of that ramp so that your sunbeam snake can make the decision whether they want to be in the soggy part of the enclosure or the dry part of the enclosure. So again, this is a sunbeam snake, one of my target species for here in Thailand. I am super excited to have found these in the wild finally and Wow, but because this is a temple and because the monk who lives here really respects wildlife, he has asked us to put him back right where we caught him, which is exactly what we're gonna do. But, whew, sunbeam snakes here in Thailand. So Dan and Apple have arranged for us to go out on this river right here by boat because it's a much better way to find things than just walking up and down these dirt roads. Easy, grace. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're gonna go down to that river over there and we're gonna board the boats and hopefully we're gonna find some really cool stuff on this river. This is a very different environment from where we've been. Uh, we've seen turtles here, um, lots of aquatic wildlife, of course. So. It's just different. It even feels different. It feels it has like the the temperature. It's just it has a little more yeah, chill it to does. it. Yeah, everything about it is different. All right, so that's our ride for tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> careful, careful. All right, rattlers, we're in the boat. This is this is going to be very, very interesting. This is a very, very tiny boat. This is the edge of the boat. That's the water. Edge of the boat. Water. We are like sitting almost at the edge, surface. Water. Damn. We're going to die out here. <laughs> All right. We're off. Off we go. How you doing over there, Dan? So far, so good. How about you? We're above the surface of the water, so we're doing all right. Yep. Wait until you get attacked by a crate. That's when it gets fun. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh. Now, there are crocs in here, aren't there? Yeah. Okay, so we hear a frog being eaten by something over here, and usually that means it's a snake. All right, so Apple, oh, is, geez. Apple is stuck in the mud, <laughs> and now the guide is stuck in the mud. <laughs> yeah, let us know what you find up there, Apple. This is one of the keelbacks that is believed to be both venomous and poisonous. Uh, these guys are really, really pretty in their own subtle way. Can you see that, uh, the markings right behind the, the head there? Yeah. And all the yellow on the sides of the face? That's gorgeous. It's very gorgeous. That is a gorgeous. Here's the belly. 
clear belly. All right, let's let him go and move on. Boop you, water insect. There's a snake right here. It looks like a pipe, maybe? Um, here, let me see if I can get out. I'm gonna sink right through this, aren't I? The problem is, is that this is like total mud, and as soon as we get out of the boat, we're gonna sink. Apple is the only one of us that's light enough to walk on the mud and not right. sink. Yeah, that's a pipe. Yeah, that's a pipe. That's a pipe snake. This was another Thai target species. He's not gonna bite you. He's not gonna bite you, Apple. Don't oh. worry about that. So this is a pipe snake. These are very closely related to the sunbeam snake that we saw earlier. But look at that really heavily banded belly. And what they'll do is they'll flatten out that tail and they'll show that heavily banded belly to a would-be predator. Sometimes it wards them off, sometimes it doesn't. And then at the tip of their tail, they have this orange coloration, which generally in nature, uh, orange or red means, you know, leave me alone. So they show that to a would-be predator, and hopefully that works for him. But look at the shape of the head. It's flat, just like a sunbeam snake. What you got there, Jeff? Puffy face. Nice. Yeah. So this is a puff-faced water snake, also known as a P. Diddy water snake. <laughs> But these are also known as skull-faced water snakes. So duvet's puffed-faced water snake have a very small range here in Thailand, and they're only found in this northern geographical location and nowhere else in the country. They kind of have a dog face, don't they? Yeah, they kind of do. They're very different from the North American Nerodia, aren't they? Sure. Oh, yeah, very much so. And that's what makes these unique, is that black belly. So this is one of those holy grail snakes that is so rare here in Thailand that even herpers in Bangkok or elsewhere in Thailand want to come and find this snake. All right, Rattlers, they just called out that there's a crate over here. Oh, look at that beauty. Got it. Holy crap. Whoa. That is a beautiful snake. I'm going to be a little bit careful. These guys can get really crazy. Especially at night. At night, yes. So during the day, these guys are actually rather docile, but at night, man, they drink crazy juice. Yeah, but I treat them the same. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> that is a beautiful one, too. Really warm wow. ice. This is a lifer. They're really crazy snakes to control. Yeah. They, um, they're, they get real whippy, and they go the opposite direction of what you expect them to. Oh, fantastic. Man, are these beautiful. That one too. Yeah. It's really, really good condition. I've seen these double this size, really big. Yeah. So now, this is one of two species of crates that's found up here, right? Yeah. So, now, Dan, this is our first one of these, obviously. Uh -huh. What is this, number 506 for you? No, it, we don't see a lot of these, but uh, I don't know, I think. We've probably seen about 15 or so, something like that. That's a good number. But we've seen some real big, big, impressive ones. The food sources in this area are plentiful. Mm -hmm. um, lots of fish and lots of frogs. And these guys can essentially just gorge every single night if they wanted to. Right, exactly. So they're going to be growing at a, at a very fast rate for the species. We can't do Make America Crate again. We have to just do Make, Ameri <laughs> oh, Make America God. Crate. So Dan, thank you so much for this adventure sure. up here. Um, you know, you were saying in your video that you know some of the species that we're finding are pretty rare, actually. Yeah, they are. We're not finding the ultra common species, but we're finding just single individuals that represent all the animals that are really hard to find, which is amazing to me because it's it's not a it's not the snakiest trip, um, but we're finding all the good stuff. So yeah, we certainly I are. Think that's that's awesome. Cool, man. <laughs> all right, rattlers. So it was just an amazing time being up here with Dan and Apple and Jeff up here in northern Thailand. We found some really awesome stuff. So there's going to be more adventures from here in Thailand. And until then, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.